And welcome to the Geek's Attic. Quality Autism already saying, let's get this thing started right as I hit the button. At least, unless maybe there's a delay. Don't know, but here I am. Uh, I'm going to do something. Maybe I want to try. I've got this, I got my camera, another camera rigged up right here in front of me. I don't know what you guys see um, on that screen. It's because I've got all this other software where I'm going to like pull up um, my other camera so I could do a little, uh-oh, see what I'm talking about. Now, things are not going well right now. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I, I was going to open up a little Batman tops card. Uh, that I've got. Hey, Rob D. How's it going? I've got this. Let me set this. This is going to look ugly for a second. I've got, I've got to figure this thing out with my um, software that I've got. It's it's pretty cool if I can figure it out. And my camera won't connect. What in the world? What in the world? Uh, I'm. You guys with me? You guys still with me? I'm sorry. I'm going to reboot this. Um, <laughs> reboot. Just close an app and reopen. No, wrong app. See, that's the thing that bothers me with all this phone app stuff is a lot of the colors all look the same. So I always hit the wrong thing all the time. And like I'm like, oh, I want to keep the only the stuff I'm going to use. Um, and I use everything. So it's, it's like the same colors and all the stuff that I use regularly. It's annoying. So I'm going to creative, open up this little camera thing here. Uh, we're going to have Adam joining me here shortly. He's gonna. We're gonna talk about the Mandalorian. Uh, so let's. I'm gonna try this one more time with this stupid thing. Um, no, wrong camera. Wrong camera. Nope. Nope. That's the bad. See now you can see my phone. Um, <laughs> this is so bad. You see, this is why it took me so long. That didn't work. Let's go to number. Uh, let's. Welcome to the geek. <laughs> Everything's just a crap show. See, I've been unmotivated. I've been very unmotivated lately. Um, and here you can see why. There we go. Now let's add a new layer. Let's add this. Let's go to mobile app. Boom. Yes, my phone. Duh. That's what I want. So there you go. Is it going to bring it up? Is it going to bring it up? I have to hit allow on my phone. I'm, this is trash. This is a trash stream. See, look. Oh, look. Great. That's what I want to see. You got my nose. <laughs> Quality, you're gonna have fun with that one, aren't you? Come on, freaking work! There we go. Look at that. Boom! You got some Batman tops cards that I've already opened. I've done this before on the channel, and I have this thing in my face, don't I? Whoop! Look at that. Out of my face. Yeah. Then we got this. How about that? Look at there. Is that good? Is that good? You like that? Um, I was gonna do a full screen of this right here, but um, don't want to put everybody through that again. Sorry. Hey, Mad Machad. <laughs> yeah, quality accidentally ends the stream. That would have sucked. Uh, we're going to have Adam on here shortly uh, to talk about The Mandalorian. I already said that. Talk about other things that we're doing, what we're reading, all that kind of stuff that we always do. I've been out of it. I haven't streamed in a week or two. Parents moving. They need my help. So I'm like, my schedule's been kind of uh, iffy. Don't know what I'm going to be doing. Um, but guys, we're going to open up a Batman card. Tops card. Should I go with the Joker or should I go with the Batman deck? Somebody say it quick. Somebody in the comments has got to tell me which which one do I do? I do have a list of all the cards that I do have. So when I have duplicates, I set them aside. And I believe I told Adam once before, because we live in the same area, that, uh, hey, I'll give you my dupes. Don't need them. I don't actually need any of these cards, but, <laughs> you know, it's cool. Okay, we got Joker, we got Joker, Joker, Joker. Okay, let's open up this card. Not like it matters because it's just the package, but yeah, I found this this um, whole box it was completely full at like this uh, really big auction thing that was out in the middle of nowhere, some little country small town auction thing. I have this. I have Terminator Two, Judgment Day. That that one and the uh, GI Joe, like the cartoon GI Joe, are still in. The saran wrap, uh, I don't know if it would be saran wrap yeah, for your kitchen. Uh, it's just not my night. <laughs> um, we got Adam over there in the, in the thing. I'm gonna, Adam, you want to come in and go ahead? You want to watch this? You want me to bring you in so you can see this too? Adam's gonna come in, he's gonna join. Hey, hey I'm in. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? 
I got these Batman cards. Uh, you can comment on them too. That'd be cool. But hey, look, I got this little plastic card thing uh, holder, but I'm all out of room. So I've, I've got another one, a big one. Look at that. So I can start Ooh. filling that up. <laughs> Did you ever, do you have any tops cards, Adam? I do not. You don't? Mm -mm. Why not? Aren't Just you don't. A nerd? <laughs> Aren't you a nerd? Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you. I don't, I don't know why I have these things either. But all right, I got to stay in front of this camera. Little... Hey everyone, I see all the hellos in the comments. Yeah, hey guys. Yeah. Hey Adam, I told you before I'm going to save you some of these these duplicates. <laughs> I have a. Uh, I need to mute my my phone somehow because I'm echoing. I think. Mic muted. Problem solved. At least I heard an echo on my end. Sorry. Um. All right. There's the gum. Adam, would you like me to save this for you? Oh, yes. From what year is this? What movie was this? 1989? So there's <laughs> a 1989 piece of gum there. Yeah, that's uh, from the year of my birth. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's nostalgic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. I was about I to say, I'll give you five bucks. I don't have enough subscribers for that. <laughs> no, I'm just being stupid. Okay, so this, we get this thing. Okay, that's a really boring uh, part. I don't know if this is a sticker or if this is just a piece of a puzzle, but I know I've got other pieces in here. I'm not going to fan these out next this time. I'll do it another time. But you see how this is like, oh, look, that's part of something. Mm -hmm. Like a puzzle or something? Yeah, and this clearly, I believe, that that's the Joker's pants. Right, those are his pants. It's really dark. And on the other side, oh, cool, look at that. Oh, nice. Is that the, oh, the bat wing? Yeah, see, this is a sticker. It's just peel. So that's what we do to stickers. You want to peel off the Joker's pants? Peel off. <laughs> <laughs> no, not when you put it that way. <laughs> Nasty. Okay, so um, in this deck, this is really, my arms are really awkward. Okay, we've got Batman overpowered. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully this isn't too blurry for people to see. You can kind of see it there. I like the car. I like that Joker car. Pretty sweet. Yeah, um, I'm just kind of like wondering, like, how did the Joker have time to, like, come up with all these gadgets or yeah. paint the cars? Paint the or... cars. So. Um, I don't read the backs of these. I just let it sit there for a second for all the like hardcore Batman collector nerds that want to know exactly what it says. And this is card 85. I actually own this card. So I'm going to set this aside. So Adam, you have card 85. Yay! <laughs> Put that over here. So, yeah, I got a Google sheet next to me that has everything that I own. Swing to safety. I like Joker. that image. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There are some, some of these images are really cool. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think I have this one. This does not seem familiar to me. Um, yeah, swing to safety number 75. I'm looking over here to see if I have number. Actually, I do have number 75. <laughs> well, look at that. What if I, this whole box, what if there is not a full collection of these cards in the box? Doesn't that suck? It's for, if for like the real, like heavy collectors, it would suck. What is that? Nailed by the Dark Avenger. Got Batman in the shadows up there. Mm, could have been a better image, but, you know, whatever. This is number 17. 17. Nice. I, this is, I don't have this one. Until now. <laughs> Rob D said, Joker had so much to do in so little time, Adam. I'm like, oh, okay. That, that's true. Yeah. Okay, this next one. This is a cool one. Harvey Dent, District Attorney, the new DA. I really wish we would have seen uh, Billy D. Williams become Two Face. That would have been cool. Yeah, I think he would have done good at it. He did a good job of being Two Faced in the uh, Empire Strikes Back. Ooh. <laughs> and <laughs> swing. That's stupid. That's stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is number nine. This is number twenty. So I don't have twenty. Usually, I think there's probably going to be two sets of these cards in a box. That's what I'm going to assume, because like a lot of these I already have. 
Alexander Knox. No, I don't remember really seeing this actor do much in anything else. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> okay, so there's the back. Number seven. Do I have number seven? Nope. That one's, that one's mine. <laughs> I need to look these things up to see how much they're worth on uh, eBay, if anything. No deals, Grissom. Who's your favorite Joker, Adam? Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Or Mark Hamill. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We had this conversation. This is number live 41. Action. Yeah, live action, Jack Nicholson. Uh, probably Mark Hamill, though. Voice actor-wise. Yeah, there we go. Bruce Wayne. You know, say what you will about Michael Keaton playing Batman. He did really good, and... Originally, I think it was going to be uh, uh, Bill Murray. Bill Murray? Really? Yeah, I, there was like a rumor that he was going to be Batman. Whoops. This is number three. I did not have this one. That would have been a weird, weird take. Yeah, but... Adam, you're going to like this image. If you, this is your favorite Joker. Uh, holding this pistol, the clown prince of crime. I, uh, ever dance with the devil in a pale moonlight? <laughs> Those are the pants and that sticker. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, the purple checkerboard type pants. Yep. This is number four. Did not have this one. So I've got one through five. One through seven. <laughs> I'm liking these comments. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't looked at them. Uh, Dance of Death. Isn't this right before him and uh, Batman get into it? And he's like, you're not going to hit a guy with glasses, are you? <laughs> yeah, and then Batman, you know, pretty much wastes him yeah. in that whole scene. This is 124. I've got my, my cameras in my way. So I'm, I'm making these weird angles and looking around it because I'm looking around the camera. So that's uh, 124. Did not have that one. Sweet. All right. So Batman cards out of the way. I'll put those in order later. Adam, your uh, duplicates are right over here in my desk drawer. All right, I'll uh, I'll put those in order later. <laughs> <laughs> if I can find my um, camera software stuff, there. Here we go. Uh, there we are. All right, that camera's gone. I can turn my phone off now. Let's get this nice little uh, stand. I need to do reviews on these, but I got. Uh, Neat little. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me and Jeremy about those. Yeah, this is okay. I need to do a review on these. and slacking, but the uh, the thing that my webcam is on, I like it a lot. Nice and heavy duty. It does what it's supposed to. That won't qualify for a review. Adam, I'll save you this gun. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you know, be you? sure to. Put it in the fridge and it's really put rough. In the fridge for me. Yeah, yeah. I'll get, keep it good. Put it in the freezer. See if it gets any harder than it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're wanting me to eat the gum. Nope. Ancient bubble gum. All all the everybody's telling me to do it. Sugar had so much to do in so little time, Adam. Yep. Uh, you didn't like Tommy Lee Jones playing ADHD Joker ripoff Two Face. Adam, you got a comment on that one? Am I frozen? Are you frozen? I hear. There we are. Okay. It's like <laughs> I asked you a question. You're just like staring. Oh, like, um, is he thinking? Is he thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, the two face we got rather than the two face we deserved. <laughs> He was the two face that we got, just not the one that deserves. It. Um, um Tommy Lee Jones Joker. Yeah, he was very Joker esque, Tommy Lee Jones, and that's normally a little out of character for him because he's normally playing like very monotone type of characters. Yeah, yeah, I like Tommy Lee Jones. I heard he's a real jerk in real life. Oh, really? Real life. Yeah, I heard Harrison Ford was a jerk in real life, too. He looks like one. Like, when you see him, he's just like, I don't care. Hmm. 
No, I'm Chad. I wish the 89 sequel comic happened so we could have seen Billy D and Two Face. Yeah. Adam, don't you have the novelization, like graphic novelization for the original Batman? Yeah. Batman I 89, do. I mean. I do. Yeah, I remember I, I found that in a half price books once and I put it back. Like an <gasps> idiot. I remember it. I had it in my hand. See, I do that so many times. I'll find something I'm like, oh, I should get this. And then I go put it back and then I regret it. it always happens. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I saw the don't I saw the Batman Forever graphic novelization and I put it back and I'm like, should have got that one. Yeah, but I'm gonna get Batman Returns soon. So good, good. And then I'll order Batman and Robin just so that way I can kick it around the yard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't like yep. that one. I've got that one behind me. The novelization. Well, no, nope, I moved it. Never mind. Over there, I did another did a novel haul today. I would be, that'd be oh yeah i saw that that was a good uh i i have a part one and part two novelization all coming oh yeah i can't wait to see this because uh matthew and jeremy know i bought so many books he's catching like, up he's playing catch up <laughs> like i literally had to buy another shelf just so i can have more room for my novelizations and for my other stuff yeah so um, your, your other room your office right now is it under construction right now yeah it's a little messy and um i'm trying to make my nerd pub actually look like a nerd pub so okay <laughs> you know with like uh a nerd type you know drinking glasses and everything so uh That's it's cool. coming along though it's almost done good so. looking forward to seeing it we've got uh rob d if you Get a card of Eckhart. Tell him to think about the future. <laughs> Rob D., if you don't have at least 2000 on hand, Harrison Ford won't even acknowledge you. That's, that's sad. Hey, Jeffrey. Well, well I heard uh, from an old coworker of mine that um, he went to go see this uh, play or something. And um, Harrison Ford and his family said, hey, uh, shook the guy's hand and said, hey, uh, I need, you know, uh, these three seats uh, that are that you're reserving right now, I also need your seat as well. And the guy was like, oh, man, you know, it's really nice meeting you, but I really can't do that. We've already paid for these seats. And, you know, Harrison Ford just like shook his head and just like was, I guess, said something rude to him and just walked away. I'm just like, that's yeah, too bad. It sucks when these people that you look up to are such weirdos. Yeah. Even like when they get political, it just gets weird. It's like, just stop. Don't. Mark just Hamill, stop. he does it on Twitter, and it's like, Mark, please stop. <laughs> just oh, stop. yeah. I, <laughs> that's why I don't have Twitter. I'm just like. Yeah. It's just, you know, they put they do things, and it just makes you like not like them as much as a person. I don't know. Just the way they act, just childish sometimes, and it's disappointing. That's what I've always, like, I always wanted to avoid like musicians and uh, actors. Like I don't want to see what their thoughts are on things. Cause I don't want my image to be tainted. Mm -hmm. That's life though. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly, I've never really had much interest in meeting celebrities. Like not because, you know, um, like because of their political views or anything. It's just more like uh, just at some point, Comic cons, or if they get really expensive, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. I don't want to, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's <laughs> but, like, too, I mean, it's just the whole political thing. Like, I don't care. It's like, don't, I don't want people, I don't talk about politics really with anybody that much uh, because uh, people can't handle themselves. They get all pissy and whiny and whatever. And, you know, I don't like the whole name calling thing either. That's the thing with, with Mark Hamill that I'm talking about. It's just because other people have different points of view, you know, he's, or you're an idiot. These people should, whatever, you know, like, just stop, stop, be the hero that you were supposed to be. Yeah. And I thought I, yeah, I think it was either you or Jeremy that shared earlier about John Boyega, like getting yeah. some Twitter trouble. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then all this uh, other star Wars news started dropping. That was pretty, 
pretty negative and bad. And then they were like, push out the Mandalorian announcement, push out the Mandalorian announcement. I was about to say, but in some star Wars positivity, the Mandalorian season two trailer was pretty good. So yes, yes. I, I enjoyed it. I saw a lot of complaints. A lot of people were like, this is stupid. This is boring. I thought it did the job. See what I've done. I've learned to tame my expectations, especially with star Wars. I don't buy into the rumors anymore. I don't look up the news for star Wars anymore. Like I used to, Back when they announced The Force Awakens, I was like, every single day, like, Force Awakens, The Force Awakens spoilers, The Force Awakens, just like, I wanted it all. And now I'm like, I will believe it when I see it. When it's on the screen, all right. Before then, exactly, yeah. Before then, I have no more, ex- I have no more expectations because it'll just drag me down. It feels like I hear loud bumping outside. Is there a ghost in your house? Uh, no, some someone's bumping with their audio beats up real high. Um, no, yeah. I just I just saw Quality Autism's comment. Adam died. Again. Oh, yeah, from Jeremy's Predator stream. My internet went out during one of the storms we had, and I was just like, <laughs> for like two minutes. It would be great if you froze right there too. <laughs> that'd be that'd be people's new uh, profile picks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, all American cornbread. The only celebrity I've met was the driver of Maximum Destruction. He wasn't spouting leftist nonsense, oddly enough. Huh. I don't even know who the I've never heard of Maximum Destruction. I don't think I have either. Hmm. Um, I met Lou Ferrigno and. It was actually uh, nice meeting him because, like, I'm a. Uh, he was just very short, sweet to the point. You know, it's just like I said, "Hey, nice to meet." You. He was like, "Oh, nice to meet you too." I said, "I really enjoyed watching the Incredible Hulk," and uh, I was wondering if I can get a picture with you. And he says, "Oh, yeah, yeah, that's working." That was it. So <laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah, I met Ernie Hudson. He was nice. Yeah, yeah. I was saying next time you meet him or something like that, if we ever have these comic cons again, you should be like. Um, you should be like, if I, like if someone asks you if you should sub- subscribe to the Geeks Attic, you <laughs> say yes. yes. Uh, let's see. Mm. Um, who's the? Oh yeah, I met the actor John Barrowman. He's from Arrow. Uh, he uh, uh, he played Malcolm Merlin. I met him. He's a really nice guy. Oh, the monster truck is what uh, All American Corporate says. Oh, truck. okay, okay, yeah. Still don't know, hmm. but anyway, hey, uh, uh, Noah from Quality is going to jump in here too. I just sent him the invite. When oh, you get nice. down here, you want to uh, do this Mandalorian? Yeah, uh, I have it on my another link on YouTube, so I might have to mute my uh, mic whenever I do. So, mm-hmm. or. But, I guess never mind. I was gonna say just do subtitles. Oh yeah. I was gonna I was gonna talk over it just in case, but well, we can try. Maybe I can turn it down, and I might. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I can turn the video down. Never mind. I forgot. I thought I had to turn my computer down completely. Never mind. Okay. Because I have. Look at that. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Huh? Going good. 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 I enjoyed I your uh, Indiana Jones review. Yeah, I was just about uh, to say that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad you're you're doing that. It's awesome. <laughs> you you said you were going to do the English version, and I said, "Yeah, right." And then you did it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fantastic. Hey, Noah, did you get a chance to watch the uh, Mandalorian? Wait, I think trailer? I have an echo. Okay. How about now? 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 No, I still hear. Yeah, for real though. Now, I hear you talk. Twice. Twice, yeah. Weird. Me too. I don't know what it is. Huh? What about me? Yeah. Test, test. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you need a l- remove? It's like five seconds after you guys start talking, you start talking again. Weird. Hmm. Hmm. 
if I mute? Yeah, how about now? Can you hear me now? Twice? What if I kick you out and then bring you back in? that German internet. It's <laughs> wearing a New York shirt. What? I'm gonna get me a shirt that says Germany on it. I don't know. Okay, let me It might just be like a connection issue. You might uh, exit and then come back in. Actually I can kinda hear the echo too. Really? Yeah. I can hear you now I Changed something. No, I hear me from coming from somebody. Okay. I... Can you hear me? I can hear you. No one can you hear me? No one's gone. Okay. He left. Here he is. Adding to the stream once again. Test. All right. Good. I figured it out. Good. 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 I'll stop okay. now. I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, it's sorry, guys. It's very early in the morning. Oh, you're good. It's it's getting late over here. I'm tired. Oh yeah, it's like uh, seven o'clock down there, isn't it? Seven. Um. No. Five. Oh. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, Noah, did you get a chance to watch the Mandalorian trailer? Nope. You haven't seen it? You don't care about it though, do you? Not that much, not really. Okay. Well, you want to you want to watch it? And talk about it? I mean, I can listen to you guys talk about it. <laughs> okay. I want to see if I can uh still do this. Okay, there it is on my face. Oh. Um it's going to be really small and I don't hopefully the audio doesn't come through. But just so people know where we're at. Guys, if you want to pull up your internet in a different browser and put up the Star Wars Mandalorian trailer, that'd be cool. Because I'm going to hit play in like five seconds. But uh, the, the what I didn't believe it when I first saw uh, this. Someone like shared it on Twitter and I was like going through and I was like, what is this? Mandalorian? Yeah, right. That's an artist's rendition of Jupiter. And then the camera goes forward a little bit, and there's like another little planet that looks like Earth. And I'm like, that's a little too close to be Earth, to Jupiter. <laughs> and then it actually turned out to be the Mandalorian um, teaser. So I feel like an idiot. Can you guys hear Rob D? Uh, <laughs> it was like, yeah, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Matt okay. Wilkins in the comments. Oh, he is? Matt, what are you doing? You're going to be... Look at my screen, Matt. You're going to see the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer. I'm going to hit uh, play on a go, okay? Three, two, one. Here we go. I don't know if the audio is playing through with you guys. I don't hear it, but that's all right. Okay. Good. I want to put this screen up in front of me so I can see it. I mean... To me, it looks good. Visually. Movie quality. The child. Yeah, the... <laughs> the over... <laughs> the overrated Yoda. They actually made a Funko Pop of the child like eating a frog. And I'm like, <laughs> really? Enemy sorcerers. I like the language they're using. The verbiage. See, that's a cool shot going through the clouds. Mm hmm. I did like that one. That's cool. 
I thought this was. Oh wait, never mind. Never mind. I was gonna say I thought this was post Empire. Like I forgot there was like remnants of it. So it's like five years after Jedi, I think. I did like that where the baby Yoda was just like, nope. <laughs> well, he just like destroys everybody in yeah. sight. Yeah, see, I like it. People are mad. There's like, we didn't see Ahsoka. And I'm like, thank God we didn't see Ahsoka. That's always a good thing. Do what? That's always a good thing. Yeah. We don't see it. Oh, yeah. I forgot she was supposed to be in that show. I mean, um, that's what they say. But like I said, I don't believe, even if it shows it on IMDb, I'm not going to believe it. I just, I don't believe it. Yeah, I, I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'll see it when it comes out. And but, yeah, I'm uh kind of neutral. I mean, I'll watch it, obviously, but you know, I'm just like, I'm in, I'm enjoying Legends right now. I'm gonna reread Death Troopers for Halloween. So, oh, nice, nice. That's a good That's one. A good choice. You're gonna read it or do the audio book or do you flip back in in between? I'm gonna do the audio book. And because I've always wanted to review it, so I'm going to because the first time I remember listening to it, um, I don't know what it was. I was I was commuting to and from work and I don't know. I just uh, had trouble. It's probably because of traffic or something. I don't know. I just had trouble like focusing on it. So I'm going to try to read it again. Yeah, so. dude, that, that was the book that brought me into the expanded universe, got me hooked and filled up the entire bookshelf behind me. I remember enjoying it. Um, I thought it was creepy. Like yeah. the audiobook was creepy. So, yeah. And speaking of Halloween, just I wanted to show you guys quick. Yeah. What I got. Nice. Nice. Okay. Nice cool. hardcover. Yeah. That's I want, awesome. I want to, let me bring that up bigger solo layout so I can see that cover better. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. It, I uh, I've been reading a book. I told everybody that I was gonna read something else. I told everybody for Halloween I was gonna be reading Abracadabra. This is like a, a hard to find horror novel, and uh, it turns out that I lied because I haven't started it. I picked up something completely different, a fantasy novel. It's like. That big. <laughs> so, yeah, I know I need to pick up the approaching storm. And I, I need to finish the approaching storm, but I just like there's that I don't know what it was. It's just this motivation just died. Where I'm like, I don't want to read any Star Wars. I don't want to read anything else. Just this. I can't explain it. I'll do a little slight uh, teaser for my book haul, but because uh, I was gonna do a. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh man. He's he's done it again. Review of this because I was actually. Hey, you guys hear me? What? You hear me? Um. Yeah, you're there now. Okay. <laughs> well, not really. Am I back here? We can hear you, but your image frozen. Yeah, you froze up. Okay. See me move up and. No, no, it's real choppy. Now, you, oh. now it looks like you're back. Yeah. Oh. How many fingers am I holding up? I see. Well, two. Two. Cool. <laughs> I used to do that too. How many fingers am I holding up? My, my, like, you know, when my son was younger, and he's like, two, one, two. You know, it's like okay. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying a minute ago was I was going to do like a little small you know, teaser into my book haul, but like, I honestly didn't know that this novelization existed. And I remember, uh, yeah, I brought this up on another stream, uh, Van Helsing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Great. Yeah. I, I just saw that at the bookstore. I'm just like, I didn't know that existed. And, uh, the wolf man. Nice. I, that one, I had that one in my hand a couple times too. Oh, really? Yes. And I, I put it back. I was just... What is it a novelization for? Wasn't uh, it a Wolfman movie? 
Yeah, the one with sometimes Benicio. In the, yeah, sometimes in the 2010s. Yeah, Benicio del Toro and Anthony oh. Hopkins. It's the novelization. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's okay, the novelization. Yeah, okay. yeah. I have the, a couple uh, of the. Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, it's the re the remake of the the forties movie. I have a couple of the songs like the uh, the original soundtrack uh, from the Wolfman. Pretty cool. I liked it. It was kind of creepy music. Danny Elfman. Yeah. 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 Usually people get Danny Elfman. They're like, oh, he's like always doing the same comedic type stuff. I say, no, he's not. He does some pretty good music sometimes. I don't know who my favorite composer is, but he does a good job. Uh, yeah, he does. And actually, I f remember reading. I don't think he knows how to read music. Really? Yeah, and he's a composer. I wish I was lucky with something like that. Like, oh, he doesn't know how to read, but he made it through 500 books in a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid, I know. But a lot of the stuff I'm saying tonight is pretty stupid. Uh, Man with Chad says, Death Troopers was his first EU novel. I remember getting it when I came out in hardcover and framed the poster. Nice. You know what, what I just saw yesterday? An interview with Joe Schreiber. Oh, yeah? He talks about Death Troopers. Oh. What I, what I found interesting, he talked about he wanted it to focus on Han and Chewie and not any new characters, but Lucasfilm told him, no, you can't do this. Like, you can have them have a small part, but it would ruin the book. Hmm. Well, he did a good job doing what he did. Yeah. That's what sucked me into it, where those little, uh, that cameo, or I guess it'd be probably a little bit more than a cameo, but I was like, Side what? characters. I was like, what? This is cool. Why haven't I been reading these for years? But it was, I was, uh, Actually, Matthew, I think I remember seeing your review before we became friends because I was wanting to read it. And I was looking up like, I wonder what other people are saying about it. And I found your video on that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And uh, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I, I want to type something into to my chat. Go ahead. Oh, OK. Um, but yeah, that's just a little small teaser of what I'm going to do for my book haul like i have so many books i think i bought like 20 <laughs> and like i was messaging these guys uh matthew and jeremy and i was just like i was just like guys i gotta stop and each time i kept saying that the books kept getting bigger oh, yeah bigger. yeah you're like okay i'm done i'm done then you like say something in our little uh marco polo app and you're like get the stack he's like all right for real guys i'm done <laughs> okay yeah then the next day all right this is it. I'm done. <laughs> so, uh, Noah, did the, uh, was the exorcist, was that a novelization or was that a book before it was a movie? It was a book. Before, oh, okay. But the author, William Peter Blatty also wrote the screenplay for the movie. Oh, he did. Yeah. I've yeah. heard about people doing like, I think Stephen King did like a screenplay for a few of his movies. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard yeah. about Michael Crichton, I think did the screenplay for Jurassic park or is it Christian or, yeah, that's I have that same problem too. I think it's I've heard people say Crichton all the time, but I'm thinking is that a different author they're talking about, or because it looks like Crichton? I have no idea. I don't know. I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> um, I've been reading some Ninja Turtles again. Turtle time. Yeah, turtle, turtle time. time. Yeah, Adam. Uh, I know you got back with me on some audio that I asked for. I I was filming and then I. Got irritated, so I stopped. I was doing the uh, issue number three. Nice. Turtle time review, but it didn't turn out, so I've got to redo it. i got to do it before I forget everything. I won't. These things are so good. Like The stories are so awesome. I just, I'm having a blast with them. No, did you ever read all the turtle Ninja comics? Turtles. Nope. Did you read it? I might read it, but I haven't yet. You should. I'm having such a blast with that. They're very right good. Now, yeah, right now I'm reading some other comics. Oh. Knights of the Old Republic Ooh, by John Jackson Miller. I like that cover. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you recommend starting off, if, if someone were to dive into the old um, the Star Wars Expanded Universe comics, would you say to start with the Old Republic first? 
just to like do it like chronological or I would say do it because this is a great series. Okay. Like I'm only missing this much. Whoop. Oh wow. You but get so far it. this is one of my favorites. It's really fantastic. Good. I've been debating it. I want to push through these turtles though first. Yeah. I got to keep track of what I'm doing. Uh, well, I need to I need to really get in sync with my reading because I'm almost at 20 books. Uh, from, that was my goal this year. And I'm at 19. I finished 19, so I'm reading number 20. Look at that. We've got Mad Machad. Chris. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Hold on. Sorry, hold on. Okay. Are you good? All right. I think I'm good now. Hey. So we got Noah, Chris. I don't know if you guys have uh, talked Not really. face to camera. No. Before. <laughs> so. Camera to camera. Camera to camera. There we go. But um yeah, I mean you guys you guys are in the you guys like the paper movie stuff. Did you guys finish the old uh, X Files book there? Uh, I haven't gotten it. Oh you haven't? No. Hey, hey audiobook audiobook is missing like twelve pages or something like that. I thought it was like four. Four was it no, it was more than four. I, I had to email or text. I, I, I took pictures and sent them to Jeremy so he could finish the book. <laughs> Be honest. You called him and read him the story. No <laughs> I read him to sleep. <laughs> hey, can you read me the book to bed? Sure, Jeremy. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pages were not included in the audiobook. Dang. So, yeah. We'll talk more about that at another time on a different channel. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm almost done with Halloween novelization. I got like four more chapters left, and I started it this morning. <laughs> you, take, you taking good notes? I took a few notes, yeah. I was just like, I finished another book that Matthew recommended to me. I'm just like, I got a lot to do for Halloween like on my channel, so I was just like, I want to get a head start. So are you so, going to review that book? Are you going to say what it was? or? Oh, uh, oh, My Best Friend's Exorcism? Yeah, are you going to review that one? Uh, I don't think so. No? no? Did you like it? I did. I did like Good. it. Good. That author is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really respond on Twitter. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, this reminds me of something. You guys, um, Halloween, the original normalizations are not available for you, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 I have the original free for Halloween, the original Halloween two and season of the witch. You have them? Yeah, I have read them. I mean, they're available here if you have yeah, just hard money. To find. If you have the money for them, yeah. they're really expensive, and I, my wife will not let me buy a book for two hundred dollars. I bought it for like eight ninety nine. Oh, what is oh. it's in German, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. I could translate it for you. Yeah. Well, hey, you, if I, I, I was, yeah. he could read us all to sleep. And be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mike Miles, uh, Michael Myers, kill that guy. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, thinking I maybe I could do the same like with Indiana Jones. Maybe do a little English review. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, those books are on my like wish list. That and the uh, the thing. That's my number one that I want. I look for them often on eBay. They pop up every now and then, really expensive, and they're always like, like, oh, uh, $50, maybe I can swing that. And then that's like the starting bidding price. So you're like, I'll hit I'll hit 50 And then it's like, you've been outbid. It's like, what? Wow, it's not, even on, it's not even on thrift books. Thrift books. It's only the, uh, the 2018 movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I yeah. just have a feeling like one of us is just going to come across it and it's just going to be like we go to that one bookstore that just doesn't know what they have, like how much it is. And then, you know, we're just like try to play it cool, you know, be like, oh, hey, I'll, I'll take this book. It, it looks pretty good. And then you just kind of walk away going. <laughs> yeah, my, my haul that I did today, that novelization stuff, See, I don't know what novelizations are available and which ones aren't like for different movies and stuff. So some of them are like a nice surprise, little treat. You find them like, oh, sweet. I didn't know this book exists. Like the sixth sense. I was like, oh, that's cool. I mean, you guys have all seen that, right? Not all of it. 
Do you know the ending though? Uh, yeah. mm, I won't nah. say. It's just one of those movies you can watch maybe once or twice, and you're like, "All right, I know." Did no you find happened. out who the author was for Sixth Sense? No, no, I didn't really look into it yet, but I wonder if it's just like a ghost writer or something. <laughs> what if it really was M Night Shyamalan? It, it could it could be. I know he like write he writes all his movies. Or used to. But uh but what you were saying a minute ago, man, like that's what I really like about the novelizations, because you don't know which movie has them. It's always a nice surprise. It's like a hidden treasure and everything. And I mean that's why I did I didn't even know about this until like I saw it at the bookstore. I'm just like yoink, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh let's see. Rob D says there's a website that has a full list of movie novelizations. What? Oh, I have to look okay. that up. Okay, so I looked it up. M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense, a novelization by Peter. Is it Peter or, David? No, Peter Laringus. <laughs> Peter Laryngitis. <laughs> Peter Laryngitis. Peter Laryngus. <laughs> Peter Laryngus. I don't think I saw the name on the book at all. So, Oh, uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, uh, Mad Machad, I I like the uh, the hype video for the Spider Man novelization. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was hilarious. Like I like, it, oh god, um, it, it just came out of like the I'm like, oh wow, fine. Like when I heard like the guys are doing the Spider Man novelization, I'm like, great, <laughs> like my time to shine, you know, yeah. hey, you know. And then I just kind of like, you know, I just I should just have fun with this and just made that. Just took the um, the uh, the pizza theme from the Spider Man Two game and just have fun with it. Yeah, I really enjoyed those side missions in the Spider Man Two game, and like I enjoyed the the pizza delivery scenes and um, uh, well, uh, the photography ones. They were always fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we got in the comments. Matt says he's nine. I guess Matt's nine subs short of five thousand five hundred. Wow. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Cool. And he sure called us good. wieners. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, now you need 10 subs. Because I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be Savage. that guy. So, hey, something that was interesting. Somebody mentioned to me in the comment section on some video. They said, hey, are you going to have a Goodreads group for paper movies? So I thought that's interesting. Maybe we should start that. I have the app on my phone. Just haven't like kind of, I haven't really put anything on it. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that you had the option to make a, a group on there. I didn't know either. So I'm wondering if we can make the official book club on Goodreads before somebody else takes our stuff. We'll just text Jeremy and tell him that's his job. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. But I thought that'd be interesting if we can if we can do that. Some troll's probably gonna do it now that I've mentioned it. My bad. <laughs> um, like I'm trying to log in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so um I was gonna ask, like, have you guys got any other books? Uh Noah, you got the exorcists and uh you it's like have you guys read? got you mean to read? Because I have something I wanted to show you. Uh, yeah, if, uh, Matt, if you're cool with it, yeah. What? Yeah. Say again? Sorry. Show uh, off some books. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know I'm a fan of James Bond. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to show you uh, my little collection. Because they got a nice release here in Germany. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. And I'm kind of bummed out because um, I guess I can show you all of them real quick. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I can I show you all of them real quick. Uh, which one is die. that one? Live and Let Die. Nice. Live yeah. and Let Die. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, Mayday? Is that her name? No, that character doesn't exist in the books. Oh, oh, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't know that. Let's just say the films and the books completely different. Yes, both have the name James Bond, but that's about it. 
Moonraker, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dad, my dad read all of them, and he would tell me all the differences. That, uh, but he didn't get to that part, I guess. Yeah, this is a great example. Moonraker. I recommend reading the book and then watch the movie because you will never guess this is the same. Like, it's really just the title. Diamonds are forever. Right. I actually bought that book. I think I did. I bought a couple of books for Jeremy. Oh, uh. From Russia with Love. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That one's simple. Dr. No, yeah. I really like these covers. I mean, pretty simple, but. How many nice. of these novels are there exactly? 14. 14. Okay. Goldfinger, yeah. Goldfinger. Have you seen the Funko Pops they have at the Golden Girl? No. Yeah, they have like a James Bond collection. Wait, did they actually make her golden? Only. Yeah, she's actually golden. And what was that? I'm sorry. Um, for your eyes only. For your eyes only. Uh, yeah, Mama Chad, they ha- had a a golden a Golden Girl Funko. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm not too familiar with James Bond aside from like, I've seen Casino Royale. I've seen. I actually just got um. Golden Eye for the Wii recently. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was the, the remake of the Nintendo 64 Golden Eye, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Yeah, but just new skins. Yeah, they, they added Daniel Craig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I played mm-hmm. that one. That's pretty. Thunderball. Thunderball, yeah. Tom Jones sang that theme song, yeah. Yep. Uh, the Spy Who Loved Me, really thin book. Mm-hmm. Is it the smallest one, you think? No, the smallest is the last one, the short okay. story collection. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Nice. You only live twice. Which is that? That actually had that movie had a good uh, opening theme song. Oh yeah, really good. Man with the Golden Gun. Man. Oh yeah. Uh, in the movie, it was Christopher Lee that played him, right? Right, and this is the shortest one. Octopussy. Octopussy. <laughs> yeah, that just definitely Octopussy. confirms what uh, Rob D says. I feel they I put feel those like... erotic novel sections. <laughs> hey! Hey! 500. The Wiener Man. <laughs> Wiener Man. That's what he called it. I don't even know if I should be on this. What What? What are we doing here? This is... I'm showing off my erotic novel collection. After dark. I don't... <laughs> I don't know about this. It's a little uncomfortable. Hold on, let me move my computer screen over here so if one of my girls come in, I won't be embarrassed. <laughs> hey, did y'all know that Jeremy from Stupid Chainsaw Productions has his own YouTube channel? What? Really? really? I saw on social media that it was his birthday. It, it really does. No, is it his birthday today? Yeah. Shut up, is it really? I talked to he him. Want to, he didn't want to be on his uh, on the stream. So... All right, so there's been a, a Goodreads account for the paper movies now. Okay, I got it. Is it really his birthday? I don't know if it really is or not, but that's what he says. I just told him happy birthday either way. So, <laughs> Hey, so, Noah, are you going to need to get another bookshelf? Yes, because these are completely full. The ones on this side also. And I have one for the DVDs and Blu-rays. That's completely overcrowded. Like, dude, I feel you. I have I have the same problem with my Blu-rays. Yeah, I stopped buying movies. Just did. I I, I thought I would own uh, the Rise of Skywalker, but I uh, I never bought it. Me I, you know, I'm always the I'm the completest. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have everything. I never bought it. So here I am. I didn't. Oh, sorry. On uh, Chapter House Dune, the final Frank Herbert one, he he has something about his wife in the end of this that I really wanted to skip to and read about. But as I read through it the first time, this in Heretics of Dune, it really, I remember the story just really slowed down, and I was right. <laughs> this is going to be hard to get through. But after I get through this, then I get to go back to Kevin Jansen and Brian Herbert, who do a much better job. Nice. So you're a huge Dune fan. You got that text message that I sent right with a picture of uh, with uh, Donatello, I believe it was. No, Leonardo. And the turtle oh. comic was reading Dune. 
Oh no! Yes, 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 I did. Yeah, I, did. I thought that was when I was reading. I was like, "Huh, Matt would like that." Yeah, yeah. No, I've 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 been enjoying Dune. This is my reread of Dune. I do have an idea of what I want to reread next, but um, uh, I've re I've reread most of the shelf now. Just about all the actually just about all that shelf now. So, uh, but I, I've I've still got like what mid October before I'm finished with all the three books left. But it's going to be a lot slower because Heretics was really it took me two weeks to finish, and then Chapter House I just started. And I'm only a hundred pages in, but I, I don't I don't I don't think this is going to happen anytime soon. But I want those. That's what I want. I love the artwork, and I don't know who it was was going through some of the I saw the angry video game nerd was going through some artwork. I was just YouTubing random things, and man. That Eastman, Brian Eastman comic looks so good. But the thing is, though, there's like, what, 9, 12, 24 of those Trey Bearbacks, Matt? Of uh, these, I think there's like, I, I haven't really like dug all that into it, but like these Ultimate Collections, I think there was maybe seven, I think. Oh, really? I, I think, think the new series is more like, has more has that kind of a much, has that many volumes. Yeah, like the, yeah, the newer ED, IDW one. Well, see, mm -hmm. I, I want I can tell you I this right now, the re yeah. like a little quick review of the, this book. Uh, it's kind of falling apart already. You see that? Oh, Where it's just kind of the glue's coming off. It's well so, read. So I guess I could see oh. where the hard covers would probably be better than these. Well, that's because you treat your copies like garbage. I'm kidding. <laughs> that's that's shoddy craftsmanship. Well, the thing is, though, I, I I want to get them. I want to get them all, and then I want to get the image run. Because mm -hmm. the image run came out with the, uh, what, the four issues that finally finished Eric Larson's run. And I want to just stop there. I know IDW is continuing and everything, but I think I'd be happy just to stop with the image run. Because the image run takes place right after the Brian Eastman run runs out. So, but I just need to find a place. Someone just, I'm lazy. Someone just send me the links where all that stuff is. I'll save it to my. I was, honestly, I want. I, I think I may start asking for those for Christmas because I really do want them. Do it. Did you, did you enjoy it? I'm still reading. I've only. I've made it uh, to issue number six. I need to read six and seven, and I'll be done with this. But I. I, all, I do have volumes two and three. Um, but like I've read the first four. I've read them twice. I got. I'll read them, and then I'll read them again. And then I'll take notes so I could talk about them on here. But they're they're so freaking good, and I love how brutal they are. I mean, like they kill people, they don't play around, <laughs> they don't mess around. They, they, they things got weird too, because you know I liked the movie. That was my first exposure to the Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. It's like the 1990 or 1989 film, right? Was it 90 yeah. or 91? Uh, or it was 1991. I think what? Oh, 91. Okay. Okay. So I believe anyway. Yeah. That was when I first experienced the Turtles, and then there's the cartoon. I, I knew there was some weird stuff from the, the, ori the original one or the newer ones. It was like the original with the uh, oh yeah, Crane. You know the lived inside don't, that big yellow dude. Yeah, don't watch them again, but just remember how good they used to I, be. Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, I bought the uh, season one on Amazon Prime. It was like five ninety nine for uh, those issues, and like the kids were watching it, and they're like, "This is awesome!" And I was like, "Sure, <laughs> sure it is." <laughs> like, I was cleaning. Oh god. When we were kids, everything was so cool. But then, when you're grown up, you're like, "Yee!" I I grew up with the 2003 series, and watching back, looking back at those episodes, um, like a few months ago, that one still holds up. I think yeah. that whole Which season one? series is on YouTube now. Really? Season three or not? Season three, uh, 2003. Which I, I I have a GameCube game, which that puts it in that same type of time period. I think that game that I have is, ties in with that show. So I, I think I played the the first, um, the first one that, that came up uh, that was like a first tie in to to the show. I know there was like two other ones. I just don't remember what um what they're called. Yeah, I want to look I, for that now. Yeah, I was actually cleaning out my closet the other day, and I actually found. Uh, I thought I threw it away, but I had an, a legit Casey Jones mask when I went as Casey Jones for Halloween <laughs> one year. I like I bought like I w dressed like in like a t-shirt and jeans and like had a hockey stick and everything. <laughs> yeah. That was a legit costume. Especially that, that mask was awesome. 
Yeah, I actually found that at like a spared Halloween. So creepy. You know, we didn't if you have that spirit Halloween open up around now, but I haven't seen it. I we had one open up. We went and uh, took the kids there and it was funny. Like my six year old, he's like, Are they gonna have those one things that you go and you like he stomps his foot in the ground? He's like, What are those things that you stomp on and they scare you? He's like, I think so. And we go and he like sees it, he's like, There it is, and he runs over, he starts stomping on all of them, and I'm like, Oh, he's that kid that <laughs> stomp on everything. Annoying. Yeah. My dad yeah. Did that too. I remember my dad would do that. We'd walk by the toy section, you know, this have the press here, try me buttons. My dad would just like do that to all of them. He'd start laughing. I'm like, Dad, stop. Yeah, I found the 2003 series right here on YouTube. It was like a whole playlist. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Revisit that childhood. Yeah. I dare you. Good luck with it, though. Hey. Okay, Matt, you read the Wheel of Time series. I'm still book five, have been for five years. Um, I started this. I'm I'm on chapter eleven. I'm getting through it pretty quick. Shadow that was lost. The shadow that was lost. Okay. It's a trilogy. There's only three of them. Um, and on the front it says, "Love the Wheel of Time." This is about to become your new favorite series. There are a lot of similarities between this and a Wheel of Time, like several. And so I like looked it up. Um, someone had circled some stuff on the map here. Uh, the Sea of Storms is in this book. And uh, the Aerith Ocean, which are apparently in Robert Jordan's book. So this guy, this author, took some stuff. This is kind of, this is kind of weird because I just actually got the first book today before I went to work. To the Wheel of Time? Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Was it like the new reprint that came out? It's the... Uh, I think so. I, I don't, I'm not sure. Hold on, let me go. No, they're they're re releasing like the hardcover. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, not the hardcover. I think I saw that, but I got the paperback. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I know they have re they released it several different editions over uh, the last several years, different paperback versions and everything. I just I just wasn't exactly sure which which one to get, so I'm just like, eh, I'll just get the paperback. Uh, I was going to ask uh, real quick, Noah, um, is that the whole entire Ian Fleming set? Oh, yeah, all 14 books. Nice. Awesome. It looks really nice. That's going to look great on the shelf. Yeah, it does. Need to put like a, a Walther PPK up there now. Yeah. Ah, this reminds yeah. me. It's in this box set. Oh, cool. Oh, it's dope. Whoa, nice. That, I like the. That looks like a. Looks like it. It looks expensive, I guess, is what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like. Um, Oh yeah, hundred sixty bucks. Wow. That's, I would it. say worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I still need to give those a shot. There's so much I need to read. Speaking like Rob D says, how many books do I have in progress? Um, not counting the turtles because that's comic stuff. I've got one, two, three. About to be four. So, look, I got to get the paper movies thing done. There's another one that Five. I. I and then I, I I read the newspaper so sick. I like how you keep telling me about you know what I'm, I'm you know what? I'm going through the uh, Wheel of Time series but I'm really not because I keep getting distracted by other books. Here's another book. Yeah, I know. I guess started this one. Um, it was close to me and I didn't want to like like I don't want to go upstairs. You can't just ignore it sitting right there close to you. I understand. Yeah, all this. Don't want to be rude. I wanted to do this abracadabra book, but I'll wait. Because I can't, like, I gotta start the Halloween novelization. This is the one I want to do. I, I gotta, I'll put everything else down and do this for next month. But after that, I, I'm gonna finish this. But then again, that's huge. That's gonna take a while. So I might, I might pick up the approaching storm again and read through some chapters. Because that, I don't want to turn that into another Rogue Planet or Wheel of Time series where I. Put it down, and a year goes by, and then I get people harassing me, like Noah, who's like, you know, I bet you're still not done with it. It's like, oh gosh, I'm, I am. If you take, you take two years, three years, ten years to read Rogue Planet, a book that is like what three hundred pages long. Yes, yeah, it's not that big. I know. Oh. Yeah, I'm about like four chapters away from finishing Halloween novelization. I was just like, I started this morning the audiobook, and I'm just like, I got to get it done. I want to get ahead, so. Month had it. it's not even October, and he's like trying to get through October's book. It's a race. Yeah, my wife uh, actually like whenever we were like 
uh, when I was putting away laundry, I was listening to it. She would like come into the room and be like listening to it. She was like, "Man, I want to watch this movie again or read this book now." And like, <laughs> I want to watch the original movie first and then read it. Hmm. By the way, uh, Matt, my uh, you mentioned Dune earlier. My wife actually, we found that at Barnes and Noble. She was like, "I want to read this book," but like she uh, she she's gonna go back for it later. So, yeah, I, like I said, I, I've enjoyed them even. The first read through, I enjoyed them all. I remember when it got to God Emperor of Dune, I was a little confused. And then the lat, the heretics in chapter, I was like, oh my gosh. But reading God Emperor of Dune this time, I enjoyed it a lot more. And I thought, oh, maybe I like heretics in chapter house. And because it just shoots so far in the future and you don't care about anyone or know anyone except for Duncan Idaho's clone, it's really hard to get into. And then plus, there's a not safe for work chapter in there that <laughs> I was really, I mean, do you talk about erotica and that's what he wrote for one chapter. I was like, what is going on here? And, you know, I was sitting in the, uh, get, waiting to get my wife's oil change while I was reading it. I had to cover it up, make sure the, no one saw me next, next to me reading it. What you reading over smut? Yeah. That's what I'm reading yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. I could just see you being like, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's like, okay, good. they slept together. I got it. That's all you have to say. I don't need to know all these details. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if like, is that really the author that's like, I'm gonna go insane right I, here. I'm gonna write some nasty stuff. Or is a publisher what, like what it's funny he wrote that after his wife died. Oh. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, now I can write dirty. Yeah. <laughs> we we make fun of uh Robert we made fun of Robert Jordan on our podcast because some I mean, every 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 maid, and Matt, if, if you've read a few of these, you know every maid or barmaid has voluptuous bosoms or something yeah. like that. Were, were there like sea like ladies that like worked on boats that didn't have shirts? Yeah. Like, oh, women everywhere that are working on these boats. They're so low cut or thin straps and you're yeah. like, okay, okay, Jordan. It's if it's, yeah. it's lonely. Are you lonesome tonight? <laughs> you know, that's, that's just, every every time we start when we start laughing about this, we're going, yeah. So can you see him typing <laughs> on his computer? Yeah. You can have this pipe. It's like it's like it's like a college kid was writing these. Like the writers from Meatballs and all those cheesy eighties movies almost got together and wrote some Robert Jordan fantasy. It's like, come on. But we were just kept start laughing because everyone has loved, or we laughed at one, uh she stood there naked, you know dripping in the sunlight dew or whatever. And her, she had a well-turned calf. That's what the line said, a well-turned calf. Like, how saying that? But, but again, Rod Jordan, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. That's incredible. But it wasn't, it was nothing was as bad as what Heretics of Dune was. And I don't even, the first time reading it through, I guess I just wasn't paying attention. I just didn't understand what was going on. I don't know. But I was like, what the heck, you know? I was like, that's kind of, yeah. but you know, and, and now I'm on chapter house Dune. It's nice because it's ending it. Well, it'll soon make sense when I start reading the Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson series again, it'll get interesting. And it kind of already is a little bit better, but like I said, a hundred pages in, and that's all I had time to read this week. That's bad. Hmm. I yeah. should have night's work there, but. So I was going to ask you the same question that Rob D says, uh, what's your opinion of the Dune movie trailer? You, you know what? Everyone went nuts over it and I couldn't wait for it. I need to get to the comments. I, I haven't been looking at the comments. Um, and and uh, the thing is, not not impressed. No. Not impressed, but everyone was freaking out over that trailer. And so maybe because it was just this high, it was told it was the hype this much. And I was like, okay. I still don't. Here's what I want to see that impressed me. Visually, I still like, was it David Lynch who did the... Uh, the old one back in the 1980 or something. Yeah. Someone no idea. I yeah. know absolutely nothing about Dune. That's awesome. Well, vis visually, it's a really good movie. Is it the best? No, but it does follow the book, which is why it's slow in plotting. But I really don't mind it. Um, there, there's a few things they could have changed a little bit in it. Yeah, but I, visually speaking, I think it's a fantastically look, fantastic film. At least in looks, I need to rewatch it again, and I kind of wanted to do that after I watched their original movie. But I went on vacation and then got several books ahead, and haven't haven't thought about it. But you know, right now I'm just trying to push through the final three books. This this one is the only one I really had to push through, and it's not too bad, I guess, because I because I'm kind of recognizing characters that were in the 
Kevin J. Anderson, uh, Brian Herbert series. I'm like, oh, okay. I know what happens later on. And I remember – I remember what happens in the end. The, it ends, there's Hunters of Dune and then Sandworms of Dune, I think, are the last two that Kevin G. Anderson finished. And Sandworms of Dune is just a – it makes it all worthwhile. I, I do know that. There's just one twist after – I've never seen so many twists at the end, and you don't go 360. It's just one twist after the next, after the next, and it was great. So I can't wait to experience that again. It ends on a high note. Hmm, that's good. Chris, do you know anything about Dune? Are you a fan of Dune? Only the thing is, uh, I had the first book over there, and I still haven't finished it. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for that moral support there, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm the same. I have the book, the first one, still not read. I mean, it's it's fine. It's a little weird. It takes some getting used to. And to be honest, in all honesty, Frank Herbert is dated in his writing because to, to kind of introduce you to his world, like the Baron brings his nephew in, and then he explains to him what the Senate is like. Why would he do this? Oh, it's to explain to the reader what's going on. And then right. there's a chapter, and then there's several chapters where Paul Atreides is learning about the galaxy around him. What, what at 17? It's a little late, don't you think? No, no, no. Because they need to do this because they need to tell the reader what's going on in the universe. It, yeah, and so they Vic, do that as Paul's education. I was like, this is weak writing. Yeah, Victor Hugo did that one time. Uh, I was listening to the audio of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And there's like a chapter called the bird's eye view of Paris. And it's like, I spent like a whole hour. That's how long the chapter was like listening to like Victor Hugo describe what Paris looked like mm -hmm. or, and the cathedral. And I'm just like, and like my wife warned me. She's like, you can just skip that chapter. Like you won't miss anything. I'm just like, but I want to hear the whole book. I should have listened to her. <laughs> <laughs> should have skipped the chapter. Yeah. See, I always thought the most like elaborate author that just goes into way too much detail for me, like was the Robert Jordan. Like he just extends it out to reach that 800 page minimum limit. Herman Melville did that too with Moby Dick. Like I remember a couple of uh, chapters where he's just like explaining what whales are <laughs> <laughs> and like all it's the like different fish, types of whales. <laughs> so what? <laughs> it's like a fish, but it's not a fish. Almost like a shark, but really not quite. It doesn't mean the other fish. It looks like a really tiny one, but that's really still not a fish either. It's yeah, I just I just remember like, have you guys ever read that one? Moby Dick. No. Moby Dick. A oh yes, I, I, I read it a long time ago. I yeah, wasn't I like a fan. Yeah. The only reason it has good memories for me is because the Bone comic book. Because in Bone, he's yeah. reading Moby Dick, and when he reads Moby Dick, everyone around him falls asleep. And I was like, that's true. There's a lot of boring stuff in that book. I, I have the, the version that I have. I can't remember who the publisher was, but it, it's a hardcover. It's for, like, kids. Um, like Oh, the illustrated classic ones? It's really – I don't know. It's not illustrated. Well, yeah, it is. It's got some stuff in there, but uh, it's a thick book. It's, like, for kids who can who know how to read. They're probably in, like – Jun not junior high, eight le maybe level uh, grade eight to something. I don't know. That's that's still junior high. Uh, eight year old kids maybe would understand it. But uh, I started reading it to my six year old. It was like let's let's sit down and read a book, and I need to read something fun for you to get into. And like we get through the first chapter, he's like, "Are we done? This book is boring." I'm like, yeah, we're done. Well, I mean. One thing that I was disappointed in was just like that. If I remember correctly, like Moby Dick does not actually show up until like the last two pages. He completely, you know, pumbles everybody, and then he's just like, "Well, bye," you know. <laughs> <laughs> My, My work here is done. It's, yeah. it's just what is Abraham? Is that the hunter? Ahab. Uh, Ahab. 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 It's Ahab's hate and vengeance and undying hatred for the whale and. It's all we get to hear about. It's all we get to hear about and how this man is driven. And, okay, we get it. He hates the whale. Mm -hmm. Let's get to some action, please. Yeah, he's like the Captain Hook of deep sea fishing. You know, wasn't he always after uh, – you know, he was scared of the crocodile, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah. So yeah. just turn that fear into anger. Guys, I'm sorry to bring Star Wars up again, but like I said, 
yeah. I'm almost done with John Jackson Miller's Knights of the Old Republic comics and Matt. I also read and finished Knight Errant by Miller and man, that's a quality difference. Like I understand what you meant when you said in your review, Kara Holt is just boring compared to like Zane Carrick, if you had him in this role. Yeah, Zane Carrick is, and this is so weird because it's by the same author. How yeah. can you make Zane Carrick and all of those characters, not just Zane Carrick, but Griff and everyone, and every, those are great characters. And then we get to Kara Holt. And I can't think of anything interesting about her. And, this, and the sad thing is the situation, you know, what's going on right now, that's interesting. We have to see it through her, and that's not interesting. I, yes. I can, and, I, and I mean, she has interesting villains, too. Yes. The like, villains the story, the villains, that's, that's all solid, but the main character, he's somehow just awful. That's, awful. The, that's the main character in Knight Errant, right? Yeah, yeah and, and there's, a, there's a Knight Errant comic book, too, and she's just terrible. He's, and, and the villains are way more interesting mm -hmm. than her in the comic book, too. It's even sadder because it's even... it's I, but. It's weird because John Jackson Miller is a frustrating author because he does stuff like that. And then, of course, he did what I think is his masterpiece, this Obi-Wan book. And for comic books, Knights of the Republic was really stinking good, too. But then he makes stinkers like that. And I, I'm not going to come down on Lost Tribe of the Sith because th those were free stories. And I just appreciate those. I don't think they have to be excellent since he was, they were given away for free. Mm -hmm. um, but they weren't, they weren't all bad. I just hated how it's kind of skipped through the time a lot toward the end. But I, I understand they had to do that too. But anyway, uh, what he does for Knight Aaron, and that was like Kara Holt, that was one of his big hopes and dreams, you know, comic book, a novel, you know, ho hopefully even more with her. But it was just terrible. She's such a bland character. Remove her. Put Zane Carrick in there. <laughs> have, have him fill, fulfill her, uh, uh, her destiny. What I noticed with Kara, like the only character trait that he gave her was she isn't good with like um, telepathy, like controlling people's minds, but he doesn't do anything with it. He mentions it in the beginning, but then it never plays a part in the story or something. No, of course not. Which is it's... weird because I'm not even finished with the KOTOR comics, but there's so much payoff to so little things, so many storylines, so many character stuff. I really, want to, I really want to read that that series. I really do. But the uh, I never, the thing is like I did did the uh, first volume of the trade is like that's no longer in print anymore. No, sadly no. Hmm. You wow. can probably get it digital. Yeah. Yeah, but I already have like a bunch of. I'm already like collecting them in, in print. Like I already had like the first two of the original, uh, like the first two volumes of the original Marvel stuff. Uh, I also got a uh, the uh, crap. I can't. Oh, let me. Something was covering the way. But I've Matt, you know what I also finished? What's that? Dawn of the Jedi. The complete era. Now, what did you, did you finish the comic book? Yes. Okay. I think it's pretty good. Does I it make the book better? Uh, no. It doesn't have anything to do with the book. Yeah, yes. They are pretty standalone. The the book has to deal with eating garbage, raw, festering, scabby garbage, and the scabby. and the comic book shows excellent potential. Unfortunately, I can't call it great because we never saw where John Ostrander was going with it. I, there's some ideas where he was going with it. And I liked where I liked the direction. Unfortunately, it just it was cut short because of the sale, and it could have been a Really, good. it was interesting. It was interesting. It's not John Ostrander's best, but that's because it didn't get to finish. I think. I think if it got to finish, I would have loved to have seen if if it finished it because I would have loved to have seen how he ended a few things. So I was interested. I was hooked on a few characters too. So, but that's because John Ostrander's a fantastic writer, and Tim Levin, um, he is too. not. I'll get out of here. He uh, is, and I have something positive to say about his book. You know this. What, what was it? Was it short? Was the book short? Because that's the only thing I think positive to say about it. But I don't remember it being short. My favorite part of that book was putting it back on the shelf when I was done. <laughs> oh, great! No, no a legitimate go ahead. Go ahead. positive. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, a legitimate positive. He does world building better than the comics. 
Oh, I don't know about that. Think that change, about it. In I'll the be, book, I'll... in the book, we are thrown just in this story is a small scale detective like story. Okay, if you don't like this, that's fine. But okay. the comics, the first issue, it's just okay. This is Typhon. These are the Jedi. This is how they came to be. It's an exposition dump, basically. And I think the book handles it better. It gives us the information as the story goes along naturally. That's true about the comp book. I just cannot remember the book well enough to agree with you. But it is true about the comp book. I do remember that. It is kind of, um, you know, kind of just lazily just sets it up and throws it in your face. Another reason I was destined not to like Dawn of the Jedi I didn't like how it started. I thought it got to a really slow start, that first story arc. And then from there, it started picking up and getting way more interesting for me. So I, I got the, uh, it's the, it's the first trade for the, the empire. It's like, uh, only has dark times and all that. Oh, dark times is great. Yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. From what I've read, it's definitely great. Yeah. And then there's the other first two epic collections for the original Marvel stuff. Nice. Where do you, where do you get them? You just find them online. Yeah, they're cheap. Well, I know that uh, someone mentioned Barnes and Noble about uh, the Dune stuff. Well, I know that uh, occasionally they'll do with the graphic novels, uh, buy two get the third free, which can sometimes be a pretty good deal when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, I, I've done I uh, I've done that before. Just uh, not not like the thing is I I don't spend like. Thirty, forty dollars on one trade, yeah. twice, and then I don't know. Yeah, that's that's the thing that with these graphic novels, they do get expensive. Really, expensive. the, Mar the Marvel yeah. stuff are like the Marvel stuff is very like, I I find those expensive, and then the like that that's probably why most of my most of my graphic novel collection is mostly DC because I feel like those are more affordable, with yeah. like the amount of like content you're getting. Like I I like the first volume of um of the new 52 batman and robins like eight issues for like 16 bucks there's there's this one comic book that i really enjoyed and i i know i think i've talked about it before on here a uh, descender is really cool it's a sci sci-fi thing i've it, read the, i read the first um trade i haven't gotten back into it sadly yeah i i was when i was collecting like single issues on comics and stuff i was really into that series i was like this is amazing but then i just stopped buying it all because it was like adding up to be just too much uh but those it's from image they were uh decently priced the the trades the last i checked the first issue or the first uh trade was like 7.99 or 9.99 the first trades for every um well i can't say every because i know the spawn trades are also are those are expensive especially on the like the thing is, like, I think they're doing it like nine ninety nine ninety nine for every like image series for new readers to get into it, and then go to the price for later. Yeah, so I think the prices on those were like eleven ninety nine for issue two or collection two, whatever they got, whatever we call them, uh, volume two. I think they were they were cheaper than the other, you know, Marvel things that just to me is like, why waste my time on the. Some of this newer comics that just look silly, look like cash grabs to me. But the the Cinder was fantastic, and I remember uh, hoping that they would come out with a movie with that. It was just so cool. The art was fantastic too. Story and art quality. Yeah. Yes. Rob D, to come back to Dawn of the Jedi quick. Tim Levin did set up a lot of stuff that wasn't explored anywhere else, like yeah, Matt. I <laughs> I'm I'm what I'm I'm sorry. I, is, I heard Don. You the might Jedi. sorry. You <laughs> might find this interesting. Okay, because, I'm listening. Because I'm listening. in his book, if you remember the comic, uh, Dawn of the Jedi, Ostrander brings up the Qua and the Infinity Gates and stuff. Remember? I think it's I remember the Infinity Gates being mentioned. Yes. I think you're right on yes. that. Like I said, it's been in, a while since I've read in it. In the comics, right? They play a big part and they were invented by the Qua, this ancient species. In Tim Levin's book, he mentions the Gri and Hypergates. So basically two different concepts. And I wondered if this was like set up for future stories or if something changed somewhere in development. Like if the Gri was where the original plan and Ostrander changed it or vice versa, I don't know. 
but that was something weird and interesting. Okay, I, I, you're you're like a archaeologist trying to shift through the crap. Try to find something good. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I know you appreciate it, and I can appreciate that. I just, for me, and I and I will, I will eventually reread it. I will eventually go back and reread. In fact, I oh, think. It, oh, Baron Cornbread. You win, Cornbread. <laughs> More like Yawn of the Jedi. Yeah, that's that's funny. I agree. I it was I did not like that book. I don't know what my like absolute worst experience with Star Wars is. I don't know. Don the Jedi was bad, but it wasn't that like ugh, I'm done. Oh, have you have you read I Jedi? It's worse. I did, but that was a long time ago. Uh, back when the wife got pre when we like the first kid was coming around. So I don't really remember much of it. I, I can't Rogue wait to do what? Rogue Planet? Yeah, that was bad. Star, Crystal Star? Uh, oh no, we, we know you love it. Really bad. Heir to the Jedi <laughs> Crystal for Star. the new canon. Really bad. Crystal Star. Did you what? Crystal Star? This is we pretty know bad. he loves it. No. No. Me, Matthew, and Jeremy like send each other like video messages, and most of them occasionally end with us being stalked by the Crystal Star book in the background. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that Slender Man like character. Yeah. It just won't die. No matter how hard you try, so, you know, like uh, hook hook the book on like a a metal chain and just let it fall down into some lava Terminator. I, Maybe that'll put it out of his misery. I sent oh, yeah, um. After that was bad. I read okay. it. I know, Matthew, you, you look forward to Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Star. The <laughs> when Indy has to find Varu. <laughs> yeah, that's how they connected the story. That's how Han be or Indy became Han. Yeah, that's the epic Indiana Jones Star Wars crossover. Yeah. I've, I've read that. What were you going to say, Mama Chad? I forgot now. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's all right. It happens. It's late where you are, isn't it? It's twelve thirteen. Twelve thirteen. It's tomorrow over there. What's the yeah, future? Yeah, from the future. Yeah, you and Quality are on the same day. Weird. Uh, of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me what it's like. <laughs> is it, is it anything better yet? It's it's Friday morning, six o'clock. It's well. Any is it rainy? Is it rainy over there? Nope. No. It's dry. It's it's dry here now. I missed the rain. We had rain last week. It was really nice. Matt, you have a lot of rain, don't you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we do from time to time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, they said mad. Sorry. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sure you do too, right? Sorry. Yeah, it's been raining all week. Been raining all week. Yeah, it's like that hurricane season, I guess. Right? It's causing up some trouble. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not really trouble, but since like, like whenever they hype up a hurricane and it actually happens, like the most damage it'll do is like it kicks over a chair. Yeah, yeah, they do that here too with like the tornado weather. Like we're gonna have seventy-five to eighty mile per hour winds, and you know, someone's trash can will blow over. We're expecting uh, softball-sized hail. It doesn't do anything. Slow pebbles. Just, yeah, little tiny things. But that's good, because I don't want all that damage. Here we go with All-American Cornbread. Waru War turns out to be short round the whole time. <laughs> and the Crystal Skull is actually the alien skull, because why not? <laughs> I would watch that movie. I would, too. That's the only new Indi Indiana Jones movie I would see. Like CGI um, Indy? No or? CGI Waru. CGI Waru? You need War? a practical giant blob. We cast Waru as a, you know, cast Harrison Ford as Waru and CGI Harrison Ford Indiana Jones solo. No, we cast the guy who played him in the Zolo movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. What was his name? Alden Ehrenreich? Ehrenreich, yeah. <laughs> Just be like, uh, kind of like Tom Hanks in the Polar Express, do the motion capture for all the characters and <laughs> just like yeah. hire voice yeah. actors. Yeah, it was creepy. I didn't like that movie. But we did say Varu needs to be voiced by Bruce Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Yes. 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 It's brilliant. I mean, who else? No one. 
Next time, Matthew, next time you read your favorite book, Crystal Star, imagine Varu's voice is Bruce Kemp. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he'll be on, if he's on Cameo, I doubt he is. I'll see if he can read some lines. I'll pay, I'll pay him to read them. <laughs> Groovy. <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> Have him dedicate it. Have him dedicate it to Noah. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Uh, just let. I don't know who that is. Lena Dunham to play. Who's that? That sounds familiar. Uh, Looking up. I know the name. She's the girl that gets mad at everything. Oh, of course. I think she was super upset about the election and fell apart and one of those people <laughs> somebody call me a ambulance the sj dead sorry go ahead oh no it, was, it wasn't important uh like apparently she like she confessed in like one of her like in her book that she like touched her sister and just this, eh. yeah so yeah that's just like pedo it was like a. Oh no! When I think it was, it was when she was like younger. I, I at least that's what I've heard. A weirdo. Yeah, huh. most of these people are. Yeah, that's how they tend to be. And they they make all the money too. So the way the world works. <laughs> I guess. Sorry, that was reminding me of uh, of uh, a Family Guy joke about Michael Douglas. And he's just like, he's like, oh, like they're at this fancy party. And Peter's like, oh, yeah, there's Michael Douglas bragging about being married to Catherine Zeta Jones. And he's just like, I'm married to Catherine Zeta Jones. Will you sleep with me? It's <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Man. Uh, yes. Uh, so for our anniversary, I took my wife to see Dirty Dancing in the theater. It's playing in the theater again. And guess what else is playing in theaters now? What's that? Jurassic Park. Mm. Yeah, they've, the, the, they've been. Sorry, go the, ahead. Go ahead. I mean, they, they've they've been playing old movies over where I'm at but for a I while. Never, I actually, what? I'll oh, go ahead. I actually, I actually watched Rocky for the first time, and that's one of my favorite movies of all time. So that was that was an experience. They were playing Rocky one through four in the theaters, and I were like every night they're going to play a different Rocky. For some reason, they didn't play Rocky five, even though it's still good. Um, and um, thank, thank you. I actually, th I actually think that movie is actually pretty decent. Rocky Five I, is better than both Creed movies. Okay, no, no that's uh, that's yes, a, that's, a line, yes, that's yes. a line I I can't. <laughs> yes, it is. You yes, had yes, it, yes. then you lost it. No, 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 here it is. The best one, unfortunately, is not Rocky anymore. It's Balboa. Balboa to me is just rock solid good, and then Rocky right underneath it. I'll accept right. it. Then you go Rocky two, Rocky three, Rocky four, Rocky five, Creed one and two. Um, I enjoyed Creed one and two. I really did. But when I was watching the first Creed, I went, "This is Rocky five. They just did the same story." And so I was a little disappointed by that. But I'm also disappointed because the best scenes in Creed. Are with Rocky, <laughs> and, and when you get to Creed two, the best scenes are with Rock. The best scene is Rocky and uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Ivan Drago, the Russian. Yeah, Drago in that restaurant. That's a great scene. It is. And I was like, wow, that's the best scene. And I remember there was like one scene with Creed that I really enjoyed, and that was it. In the second movie, I was like, oh, that was even you know. And I want to like Creed. I want to like. Creed. I know he's young. He's got to be impetuous and stuff like that. You know, he's got to say, who, who, you know, he's got to be disrespectful for Rocky. Like, what do you know? But the thing is, though, don't disrespect Rocky because everyone watching the movie loves Rocky. So when you diss Rocky, we all don't like you. And, you know, I know what they're doing. They're doing that young angst and stuff. But the thing is, you're doing it against a well established, very polite. I mean, who's more lovable than Rocky? You know, the guy who's always got your back and everything. The thing is, so when, when that's the problem I, with those movies. The thing is, like, I, I don't want to spoil it. But does anyone really care? Okay. Like, I've seen quite a bit of the Rocky movies. So when when they show like when they, you know, they showed him getting cancer, like I 
Like I can understand um, Adonis's. I can understand Adonis's um, reaction. Like, like you, I'm pretty sure you would get like a little bit mad if. You no, know. no, I understand. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when at the first, when you know, in the first movie where he doesn't think he can be trained, he's not, he's not trained him well. What can you show me and stuff like that. And then the second movie, he's got other issues right now. And, and you know, they kind of, and I get it. I get it. He's the young, impetuous guy. He makes, you know, he's, you know, wears his emotions on his sleeve. Rocky's more, you know, you, but at the same time, Rocky did the same thing, right? To his trainer. You know, no, I'm better. I can take him, Mickey. I can take him. No, you can't. Listen to your trainer. But I think the difference is when he's disrespecting Rocky, it's like, that's our, and even though he has his own issues in the second movie too, but, I don't know. Like I said, I still thought it was good. I still thought it was good. What a great idea for him to fight the son of the guy whose father killed his father. That was good. I like that. Mitch, I actually like the Rob ending D. to that. Rob D has a question for you. Oh, does and the this, ending of the first one was good too. Does this new Jurassic Park re-release have an apology for Fallen Kingdom at the end? <laughs> I think they show a T-Rex dumping, taking a dump on the DVD. Oh. Actually, they just CGI that DVD and the T-Rex are... <laughs> and is, and, is the Jurassic the name World of... franchise dead? I don't really go to this. And what's Jeff, the, Goldblum? Jeff Goldblum's like, that's a big, that's a massive pile of shit. <laughs> yeah, that's just, that's just yeah, CGI him in. Um, um, I think there's I, I have, I have I a rock uh, just uh just uh, crapped all over the DVD. <laughs> but really, is this franchise dead, Jurassic World? Like, is there even talks about a new movie? I think they still, because people go, ooh, dinosaurs, and they still go see it. But here's here's how it is. I'm so thankful for Jurassic World 1 and 2, because Jurassic World 3 is a masterpiece now, compared to both Jurassic Worlds. I never and, saw the last one. Jurassic Part 3 is enjoyable if you've read the books, because it's all the scenes that the movies never showed you that were in the books. In fact, Steven Spielberg even told Joe Johnson, he said, hey, here's all the stuff we cut from uh, Jurassic Park. Go ahead and make a movie out of it. And that's basically what they did. Yeah, that wasn't like the river, the, like the river boat thing was in the book and then they put that's in the... A, that's tree. in the first one, but, but it's, a t, it's the T-Rex the kids are still running from. And they go into the, the pterodactyl scene is in the first book. Um, there's, yeah, a lot, right. there's a lot of stuff that they took from the first two books that you know just got dropped on the cutting floor that Spielberg just couldn't do like awesome scenes and he seriously handed the book over to Joe Johnson and went here here's all the scenes from the novel that are really awesome we just couldn't make a we can cobble this together and make a movie out of it so when you see that it's it's actually not bad and to be honest I I, re I recently rewatched them all and Jurassic Park 3 is not that bad it's I not thought, especially compared to Jurassic World I have I have like nostalgia for 3 I I'm that's probably that's probably why Oh, like, no, that was like, actually the that was like, like the three. first that's like the first um, Jurassic Park movie I've seen. But what the question is, do I want to watch the, it again in theaters? Yeah, but it was such a the reason why I'm hesitant to say I don't want to watch it in theaters because the first time I ever saw that movie in theaters, I honestly thought dinosaurs existed again because I had no idea how they got some of those shots. You know, that was that was when CGI was just really just popping. And that was the first time it, it was it was the new generation Star Wars. You know, we just had never seen special effects like that before. And I seriously, that brontosaurus scene, my mouth was open to it. Went, how how are they doing this? Like I couldn't I couldn't imagine like that looks so real. And that's what you had the whole time. You're thinking, oh, my gosh. And, and Steven Spielberg knew we're going to use animatronics as much as we can. And then see, we're not going to just go CGI crazy. We're going to use CGI sparingly, but it's going to be good CGI. And it hit on all cylinders, man. That that movie blew my mind. Am I going to get that same experience this time? No. It's going to be fun, but do I want to take away that? You know what I'm saying? Does this make sense? I understand. Mm -hmm. I, still get, I still get goosebumps, though. I was going oh, to no, say no. this. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Come on, the door swing open. The goosebumps everywhere. Music, yeah, the music is the... Na, 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 na. What about this new Jurassic Park camp... Cretaceous. They, oh, that, that Netflix show. Yeah, I guess it deb debuts tomorrow, Friday. I've heard of it. I was just like, I, what me you, and what Kelsey were. Show? It's a it's a cartoon. It's apparently oh. I'm looking at the the news here. It says uh, Jurassic World meets Willy Wonka. 
So it's an animated show for kids. Like a bunch of kids, I guess, go and explore the park or something. Just imagine the ending. Just imagine the ending is every like every kid dies horrendously <laughs> in the first in the first, in the pilot, so they cancel it. It's like yo, we summer camp, it's Jurassic Park. The, the Velociraptors do like Oompa Loompa songs, like Oompa. <laughs> yeah, after the T Rex eats them. Clever girl. Oh yeah, but uh, <laughs> since we were talking about Jurassic Park three, I have to do it. You know, we have to reference the famous dream scene. You know, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. I don't know why people gave that gave that scene so much shit. It's just like literally one tiny like something you can just get like okay, you can laugh at it for a moment and just move on with your life. Yeah. yeah. My kid like the toys look fantastic to uh these days. Oh, I bet to a kid that just it's it's Oh mad yeah. My, my kids they have a couple of the dinosaurs. They have that that new one in Do- Indominus Rex, I guess. Which Adam, don't you have that too? Did somebody give one of you give you one of those? They're really cool. Like these things, like you, they can eat the people and they go down their throat and stuff. It's awesome. I got the Lego. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. So you can you can have them like pick up the action figure and swallow them and it eats them. I actually got the Lego T Rex and um, Carnotaurus from Fallen Kingdom sets. That's awesome. Yeah. What, what is what is the dinosaur from? What's... <laughs> <laughs> What's it called in uh, Fallen Kingdom and the first Jurassic World? They make up like new mutant dinosaurs or something? Yeah, that's yeah. what he did. Like the awesomeness Rex or something like this? Indominus, the Indominus was in, Rex. Yeah, Indominus was right in the first, first world movie and the Indoraptor was in the second one. Hmm. They're cool toys, that's for sure. Like, uh, my kid, he just turned six in August, so he got Jurassic Park toys. And they even he even got that Target, ex- I don't know if it's an exclusive, but it's like the two foot um what's the, the long neck <laughs> actually actually that's what i sounded like every time i turned the page of dawn of the jedi <laughs> <laughs> chapter two <laughs> another one <laughs> I get this book up. I gotta get one of those. There's your new intro. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'll do. I I think I mentioned this in my update, but I'll tell everyone that I do have. I had had to remake it again, but I do have a new intro specifically for New Jay Order. That I will take back down and use the old one again. So don't worry. The old one's not going away, but... Temporarily, I thought it'd be nice to just do something special for New Jail Order. So not nothing for uh, the Legacy era? Well, I mean, it'll probably go back to normal. I mean, I just don't... I, I don't know. I mean, the guy who filmed the actual intro, he's been wanting me to redo it and redo the music and everything because he thinks it's been way too long. <laughs> but um, everyone, you know, Matt, everyone loves it. Matt, uh, when you did your review of the crystal star not too long ago like i went into it thinking like all right what's mac gonna do and it was like just a straightforward review and i was like well so does you know, the crystal just, star just, i put on the gremlin <laughs> he liked, yeah yeah but i, I was I mean, thinking i just did i just did a you know uh a straightforward you know, review i was like last oh. moment at the end but just could just explain how weird it was but she she was a star trek author who decided to write a Star Trek novel, Kevin J. Anderson and a few other authors, you know, reached out to her and said, Hey, welcome to the Star Wars family. If there's anything you need, any, you know, she's like, Nope, I got this. Like she thought all sci-fi was the same and she's proclaimed brilliant for Star Trek fans. So mm-hmm. she just wrote, and you think about it, it plays like a Star Trek episode. What if they, it would be so funny if they reprinted this book in hardcover, give it a new cover, but for canon. They did that. And it was like a, I guess so, the witch fire. But like, if they did it again, like in canon, so that like that was the portal to what brought the expanded universe into canon. So there's like, oh, look, they exist all in the same world. Varu is. You the mean portal. Disney Star Wars is all Varu's? Form. Varu is the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do hire porn You're authors killing him. You're in new canon. So here. it's true. Do what, say that again. Uh, they do hire porn authors. They do. So, yeah. 
they yeah, do like, wait they hire what erotic yes. writers oh, delilah yeah. dawson well yeah, what the new canon does mm-hmm. yes yep I it's like i mean not star wars oh, Raylo, I mean, a hashtag. and it's weird it's like why who's reading that to bring her in to write a star wars book Someone at Lucasfilm or Del Rey. Yeah. Someone at Del Rey in the uh, Del Rey she, office. Like we need for to everyone interested, look it up. Ava Lovelace is her pseudonym. Yeah. Who's oh, reading that kind of stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Horny, huh? Let's get her to write something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna survive till the end of the, the, end of the stream. <laughs> yeah, you can run out of batteries pretty quick. <laughs> I love that thing. I'm, I'm going to get I'm, new I'm, one. I'm, I'm I think they have one for a T-Rex. <laughs> they, they, have, they have smaller ones, too. Man. I don't care. I want it to make the noise. <laughs> I, I think Matt's not going to survive at the end of the stream. Uh, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. But um, what we're talking about... Totally forget. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Erotica. Okay. The, th- the thing is, I, I it's... If everyone everyone forgets about this, but Bond and McIntyre and AC Crispin came over about the same time, and they were just successful Star Trek writers that they thought would transition well. The reason AC Crispin transitioned well is she she took the author up. She took Kevin Janderson up on his offer and said, "Yeah, help me, you know, make sure this feels like a Star Wars novel." And she really took care. Where Bond and McIntyre thought she could do this on her own, she didn't need anyone's help, and wrote it, and really just Wrong. didn't say so what. She was no, wrong. She, no, she and she was wrong, but that was the big difference there. But I actually have had someone tell me that that's, that's their favorite EU novel. And I went, yeah, I started laughing. I said, yeah, right. And I went, wait, really? And it so happens. She's yeah, that was Matthew. Star- well, she's a... <laughs> shh, shh, shh. We're, we're calling him G Attic. Um, please anyway. highlight Cornbread's comment. Please. <laughs> anyway, but she... Um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no, it's called it's called Waru beneath the scales. Writ- written by uh, uh, what's his name? The guy that got fired. Chuck Wendig. Chuck Wendig. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, the- I mean, I mean, I have a clip of Jeremy saying he would eat Waru's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Remember from from the drunk stream. And there's our explicit tag. There's Jeremy. I'm sorry. No, no, no you're good. Yeah, I was just messing here's with you. Here's what I want you to do. I'm being serious. I want you to get some poppy beat, you know, one of this free downloaded YouTube music things, and then play that clip of Jeremy saying it. Every every other every other clip, you know, you know that I I, I I'd like that video. <laughs> I'd give it a challenge. <laughs> challenge accepted. Um, I just. It's it's but with but she really liked Vonda and McIntyre because she was a big Star Trek fan, and I I don't I've never read her Star Trek stuff, but supposedly it was very good. And when she wrote a Star Wars novel, that's what got her into reading Star Wars, and that's smart, you know, because Star Trek fans they follow over. And she went, "Well, I like Star Wars too." She's ready. She went, "Oh, Vonda, you're so great," and then read the other stuff. But she really likes Vonda and McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big lump of jello wearing well, a robe. If you remember, Luke does enter Waru. Oh, so in that says, oh. oh. Jeremy and Han and Leia join him too. Jeremy wants to Was be Han Luke. in there? Yeah, Han and Leia. They also got into Waru and pulled Luke back out. Oh, oh my. They did. That's how he got back out. Wow. Chris, you read the Crystal Star? Me? Yeah. No. Don't. You should. You should. No. 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 Yes. Yes, you should. Do it. Uh, on a, oh, no, no. Honestly, honestly, w- I, with 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 Crystal Star, you have to. Re- it's such a disaster that you have to read it. A disaster meaning none of the characters act anything like they should be acting. It's like a. It's like and a it's completely just, different. It's its own canon. It's all weird. It's like that. Grimm's fairy tale meets you know space. A space opera. It's just you know because the were the werewolves and the ghostlings and the I can't remember what other silly uh, alien she came up with, but it was like oh the 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 Pegasus. It wasn't what the the half Lusa whatever Lusa a was Pegasus. 
not Pegasus. What is it? What is the half horse? Immediately. Half- I would enter Varu immediately. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is it? The half the Minotaur. Is it no? No, no, yeah. no. Wait. You're half horse in your half. A centaur. Feet. Centaur. A centaur. A centaur. A centaur. Or- she makes up a centaur race too, and it's just like, what? What are you Listen, doing? If you read it, just stay away from sharp objects or <laughs> firearms. And gelatin. And, and yeah, and gelatin. But, he, but you know what I just realized? Covered in it, Kellogg's cornflakes. <laughs> but you know what That's I just glorious. realized? Crystal Star might work in the Disney canon with his portrayal of Luke. Yeah. Just keep it inconsistent. Oh, fine. Yeah, that would be Mo- consistent with Mo- what we portrayed in the Disney. Weird. Movie. That's true. Oh, <gasps> because he's so depressed. We were dealing with the, the Luke from an alternate universe, and when he went into Waru, <laughs> the real Luke they pulled out the one from. Oh, I've just heard it here first on the pizza. <laughs> I feel I feel so lost. I really like maybe, oh, maybe I should read. read or pick up pick up Witchfire and just read it. It probably you probably get the same same reaction. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Matthew's on Amazon right now. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Matthew has several copies. He may send you one. <laughs> I mean, it's so bad. Man. I, did you did you see Chris's review? There's a Witchfire book. That says yes, Chris, I saw that. Yeah, I, I remember hearing that too during that same time. I I never, I was like, I'd rather not have another copy of yes. the Crystal Star <laughs> because you your shrine is already full. You are yeah. the guy that gets the Crystal Star books. All all Crystal Star in those shelves. No, he has copies from different languages. He has the German copy. Oh yes. Yeah. I, I sent him a signed one. Uh, hey, every everyone, everyone watching. Send Geeks Attic a copy. Just just gift him one on Amazon. A paperback. Just see, it can be cheap. There's a paperback. Or hardcover, whatever you store. have. And he starts getting all these. And you have to keep them on your shelf. Like just, just I a would, whole that row. Happened, I would just, dis- I'd open the window and I'd just display them all right here. I like, you know what? Like I, I showed, I showed Matt the other day when I went to the bookstore, like the uh, used bookstore. There's, there was like two or three copies. I should probably get this yeah. and just send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, do it. You should. You should. No, but seriously, pick up a copy. It's super cheap. It's. It's just weird. It's not can, good. Sure. I mean, it's fine with several copies. Yeah, it would. It would definitely be in my top five of worst books. But I mean, I Jedi was pretty bad. Um, uh, what other ones did I not like? What's the? Uh, did oh, you like Rogue Planet? Gambit and Gambit and Stealth are awful. Oh, Gambit and Stealth are awful. The um. Shoot. What is it? Red Harvest, completely hard. Oh yeah, that's, that one's just a weird one. Republic um, Commando. Yeah, but that's because I don't like Karen Travis. But I really don't like the Republic Commando series. Okay, um, that's that's like heresy right there. Coruscant Night series. I don't like uh, uh, the Kara Holt Knight Errant. Obviously, that would be in my top ten. It was um, a boring book. It's just a terrible book. I tried reading the first. Um, volume of that, but I couldn't get through it because of the art. I don't know. I just didn't find it. I did. I didn't find it off-putting for some reason. Yeah, yeah. It's a bummer when comics do that. Is it like that photorealistic stuff that they just kind of painted over? It, it. I don't. I. I think so. I don't remember. You know what? The new I, and stuff they did that. It was like here's a yeah. clip from a movie that they just like put like an art filter over it, and you're like. This looks bad. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I, 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 I hated. Sure. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like the Night Errand comic art. You might. You mean? Yeah. Like. What in the world is that? You just get attacked by an Ewok? No. Hold on. What was that? Oh. But like, I couldn't get into like not the new, not like the um, not the Charles Soule series, the Darth Vader stuff. Um, it was like the first series when the, when they when Marvel first got the the license. I. Th- the story is eh, like it's fine to me, but again, the art is just kind of distracting because, like you, like you said, they took clips from the movies and just. I, I hate I hate these kind like I hate these, um, these art artists in quotes because they literally they just took. Yeah. Like re- like recently, what's his name? Greg Land got got um, like he he's one of those um, those people who literally 
the thing is he took art from like a different from another artist too and that's that's crazy like i don't know just it's leaving but i don't know why they think i don't know why marvel always takes those kind of kinds of like i don't know what i don't know what these artists have against them to you know hire them but you know oh, what cheap. I think we can say for sure? Dark Horse always had, had not good artists, but artists that actually made something. Like, I saw a few of these new canon comics, and they really look terrible. Like, I agree with you with the Photoshop look, almost. Yeah, yeah. I stopped reading them. Stopped getting those. Like canon stuff. I trade weight for the ones that interest me. So. I need to get I need to get back into Legends. Um the last one I read was actually <laughs> Dawn of the Jedi. <laughs> and oh, books? Books, yeah. I want to get into the comics too, like the like the old republic which you have. I like, might have to go digital, but um uh, I'm actually about to reread Death Troopers as I mentioned earlier. Um but um, as I think we were talking about earlier, like worst Star Wars experience, uh, it probably had to be done the Jedi, like for Legends. But uh, I can't think of one. Not, oh, well, not really. I I hated Rise of Skywalker. No, that's one thing. But I don't know. Like I'm not move. Like besides movies, like I can't really think of one on the top of my head because I the thing is like I avoid the train wrecks. Mm. Yeah. Wise decision. I mean, that would that yeah. I mean, I would like to say I do the same, but we read the Predator, and then we watched it. <laughs> yeah. I'm so yeah. glad I only had to read the book and not watch this movie. Thank you. You're lucky. What was the one before that? Predators. Uh, Predators. Yeah, I think that's what we watched. Rewatch, rewatching that with you. I mean, I, yeah. I was in the stream. Um, I mean, I wasn't on the stream, but. I, on the chat, yeah. rewatching with you guys. Like, I remember watching it the first time. Like, I like it was like a long time ago, and I remember liking it so much. But rewatching it, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I remember you're like, yeah, I remember liking this movie. And at the end of it, you're like, I like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, reading the Predator, as, as I mentioned earlier, that was the my first encounter with the Predator franchise. And so I was just like, I was indifferent about it. I was like, eh, well, well, I mean, I'll, I'll save my thoughts for the, the stream. And when we, when it was actually watching the movie, I'm just like, and actually visualizing what I was reading. I was just like, you know, I was just all like, <laughs> you know, just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeremy just uh, loves to torture people. I, yeah. That's why yeah, we, we need YouTube to make him suffer. That's what's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I'm sorry. I got to go. I got I, I got a fussy girl, but um, thanks for All having right. me on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining. Uh, hope you hit that 5,500. Oh, oh, man. Right there. Nine away. Not <laughs> subscribe today. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, share some, I'll share your channel stuff. <laughs> I'm on the Twitter. Uh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, all right. I'll see you all later. How are we going? Bye. So I started watching The Walking Dead again. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Did you guys ever watch that? Yeah, I I stopped watching after season four, I think. But my sister continued watching, and she kept giving me updates. And then when Negan showed up, is when I yeah. kind of that was the episode I only watched, at, like after I stopped watching because I I read the comics at the time, and I I had to see it. I had to I had to see it. Yeah. See, well, for yeah, I don't want anybody saying spoiler stuff. I just. Um, I was watching it live, you know, like uh, up until season five, four or five, like what you mentioned. And um, then I stopped. It wasn't because I was like, oh, the show sucks. It's just kind of like got you know busy and just started doing other things. And I was like, I don't have time to go over to my parents' place and watch. This is what we were doing. Like we were going over to my parents' place and watching it on Sunday nights, have a dinner, then watch it. My parents were like, why are we watching this show? <laughs> this is really graphic and disturbing. And I was like, guess we'll stop <laughs> but uh then when it came on netflix i i watched uh, another that's when i got caught up to season five and then i quit and then just recently i was like i want to i want to start watching that again get caught up 
So I, I made it to season seven and just got to Negan and what he did. You know, like, wow, this guy. The com- yeah. like, I'm not sure if you guys read the comic, but uh, the, 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 the show. Oh, you read all the comics? Not all no. of it. Oh, sorry. It was like either one of you. Not I only read the Negan one. I I read all like I read all of it up to like halfway halfway through um what was it all out war that was the that was like the uh their event was it I could I think that, so yeah I was like halfway through that and then I like it was like throughout like freshman I know not freshman year um I don't know it was some point in high school and I couldn't afford to get I couldn't afford to uh to get to get comics and that's why I trade rated till still to this day but um. I just never caught up. I know they finished it like what was it like a year ago? But, oh yeah, the comic. Yeah, I think it might have been this year or late last year. I bought. I have the last issue. It's because I was like, that might people might be wanting that one later. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. You just know, have I it. never, I never watched the show or read the comics. But what I found out this year, for some reason, I own some books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they had those. Yeah, like they I had like. About, sorry, go ahead. I don't even remember oh, buying them. I have eight of these. Weird. Who's the author? Is um, it Robert Kirkman and Jay Bonens- Bonensinger? So Robert Kirkman actually wrote the book too. I don't. I think it's Jay Bonensinger writing, but okay. Yeah, it's like he's story by, and then. I mean. I think he also did. Um, Kirkman some of does the... has a little thing here. I... Maybe I think both. He, I think he also did some of the books himself. Hold on. Yeah, I think because the first four have Robert Kirkman and Jay Bonensinger, and then the last four only have Jay Bonensinger. So I guess he teamed up. Yeah, I remember seeing some like Rise of the Governor or something like that. You know. Oh yeah, that's that's one of them. I wonder if I can even read them like on their own. I I wanted to read those, but I like the thing is like I was playing. I played the game, the Telltale game. Oh. And, and like Carly was in it, the like, and she was also apparently the person who. Well, I don't, well, te- um, technically, you guys already watched the show, so um, you know when like she killed the governor. Yeah. And in, in the comic, and kind of like it, kind of the the game tied on, tied in with that with that being that that same Carly apparently. I think they I think they write them. They changed that to a different one now, to the one in the book, because I think that it's uh, I haven't actually played the final season of the new game, so I can't. I can't. I'm not exactly sure if if they were conned. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I think that uh, Rob, did you tell your parents to get on Netflix and keep watching? Because I'm actually I'm really enjoying it. Uh, like like I said, I just made it to season seven. I'm with Negan now. The guy's an a-hole. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just, uh, the show's depressing, of course. And yeah, there's the graphic bloody crap, but it's a it's a cool story. Just, you know, like the how's humanity going to resolve itself? Because a lot of the stuff, it's like kind of like the world we're in today. It's just crappy and everybody's out for themselves type situation. So yeah, that, that, I experience that almost every day, unfortunately. Yeah, it sucks. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember what, uh, season we ended on. It was one of the later ones. How many seasons are there up right now? I think it's nine. Nine? I, I think. think we, isn't that, see, wait, are we, isn't season 11 right now? I don't know. I don't know. I thought, it, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I thought that the, the next season is their last one. I think I'm at like around, I ended like around nine, I think. It's just we... But it, we had like a, a event too. Like me and my wife would go over to friend's house and we'd watch it and like talk about it. But and like um, and like what I always used to love watching the Talking Dead, like that talk show. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah, it's on they, season. It's on season eleven now, or at least it's yeah, about to start. Yeah. Premiere in October. Okay. I, I always loved like get like the the talk show, but I was just like, yeah, it's kind of cool. They're all talking about it, you know, kind of like what we're all doing right now, and you know. Um, it's just we just kind of got out of it, and it was kind of sad. But might have to start watching it again. Yeah, it's like I when I'm working, you know, still working from home. That's awesome. I don't know how long that's gonna last, but I'm, I'm trying to soak up, you know, that ah, I, I love being home. So I have my little laptop to the side where I just have the episodes playing, and I'm like, you know, working, and I'm like, 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, that's uh, American Corporate. Yeah. I just I think I got to that. But they what? but they weren't they weren't all uh all lesbos in the that community unless the, I'm getting to something else. But there were like all these women in a community and um Oh yeah, I remember what you're talking about. All the men were killed in a battle. So it might I don't know. That might be something different. I don't know. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying I hate being philosophic and things I used to like <laughs> I don't know. Like I remember, something happened in. Um, have you ever guys watched? Um, you've seen the CW DC stuff, right? Any of you? I'm like there was like this. There's like this one episode of um, of uh, what was it? Uh, something like the something of tomorrow. It was like that one. Hold on. Uh oh, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Or? Yeah, that. It was like one episode. Of, like I used to watch it like the first season, and then like I don't know. It was weird and it wasn't for me. Then it got even weirder, where like Grodd went back in time to try to kill Barack Obama. <laughs> it was the most weirdest shit ever. That's weird. It is, and it was. I I, I know this is like I don't want to do this whole political shit, but like it was like he even like. They even like ma- made um, Grodd say, um, "Time to make America Grodd again." I cringed. Oh. I cringed. In like, literally, if I can, I can't describe it. I can't. It, literally thinking about it, I can't. I can't. Like, it's just kind of like, eh, just I, I don't want to. Huh. It's yeah. I... Is it's like really weird? I. It's, don't it's, recommend. It's it's just the weirdest weirdest shit. Weirdest shit. Would would you recommend Bad Woman instead? <laughs> I haven't seen that, and I don't plan to. Didn't that get canceled? It did. Well, no, but no, Ruby no, Rose, no. Ruby Rose quit after the first season after twenty episodes, and it ended on a cliffhanger, big for her character. And now they still say, "Oh, we make season two. and they wanted to cast like, like a. A black lesbian woman, or something. Yeah, I mean, oh, they wasn't have there already a, cast. I'm not sure. Wasn't there like a bunch of controversy with the casting of the Batwoman? Yes, because when Ruby Rose quit, they immediately said, "Oh yeah, we are gonna cast another uh, lesbian actress," and they made it very clear we want a lesbian actress, not one who is good for the job. That's so weird. Yes, huh. it is. That's That's things weird. get weird. It's like you can play it one direction where it's like, "Oh, well." I remember uh, Black Widow from Marvel. What's her Scarlett real name? Johansson? Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. She got, um, uh, I guess, chewed out or made the news because she was going to play like a transvestite or something, a transgender. I don't know, whatever they want. I, I don't know what it all is, but tra- I think she was going to play a transgender uh, character. There's all this backlash. Like, we need to have a real transgender play the role. It's like, but it's acting. They don't know it. They think movies are just as important as real life. Yeah, and it's like it's, someone's portraying the role, and then act, why does somebody have to be that? I don't know. It's weird. I, then there's I mean, the whole. It, I mean, it can be terrible if some actor tries to play like someone who is, I don't know, has mental problems or s- some other stuff. For example, because I have it here, John Travolta gave the performance of his life in The Fanatic. Playing a, I guess I can say this word, a mentally challenged. Yes. Fred Durst directed that in. Yes. I, <laughs> I watched the Red Letter Media uh, thing. Yes, on that. it's the funniest thing ever. Just imagine him just directing, like, yeah, cut. <laughs> John Travolta's first line in the movie I can't stay long, I gotta poop. <laughs> wow. You know, this is off subject, but uh, with the whole movies, there was a German movie that I watched in college, and it was hilarious. And I can't remember what it was. And it had like some old man. I think Blue was in the title. I remember we rented it at a, I me and my roommate rented it at a blockbuster. It was funny. Das Boot? No. World War II movie? 
No, not boot. Blue, like the color blue. Hmm. It was a German film. Yeah. Was it was it a German title or the German title translated to English? I think it was tra- it was probably translated to English. But it was a a really goofy movie. Do you remember uh, who played in it? No. No. So uh, I'm trying to look up German movie with blue in the title, but I'm not getting anywhere with that. <laughs> yeah, like I wonder how many German titles have blue in it. Nope. That's a bummer. Huh. Anyway. Yeah, back off subject. Sorry. But guys, you wanna wrap it up? Should we wrap it up? I know it's really early over there. You probably gotta get your day started and I was about to say, I I have, I'm on a vacation. You're on vacation. Nice. Two weeks, no work. So nice. Next week, I also have free, so Everyone's sweet. Great. All right. I was going to say, I think I saw the sun rise in Germany <laughs> right behind me. <laughs> yeah. And it's great that I don't have to care. Yeah, that is cool. What about you, Chris? You got to work tomorrow? No, I'm off. Nice. I got to work. Oh. Yeah. At least it's from home. Yeah, true. So it's kind of like not going last minute. Wake up when the alarm goes off. The last minute, last second. Clock in and then start my work. Just work, just go to work in your PJs. Yeah, I just roll out of bed, come upstairs, work. Then hear the kids all wake up and yell and scream and put my headphones in and put on The Walking Dead. <laughs> And hear others screaming. <laughs> so, You're just like, let's see, screaming because of zombies eating people, kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I, I'm enjoying the, the show. I'm enjoying all the books that I'm reading. It's a good time. Still stressed out. Yeah. Thanks for joining, guys. Appreciate it. Everybody that was watching, have a good night. Cornbread, Rob D. Everybody else. Uh, bye. Bye.